Welcome to learning about high blood pressure because your health is worth working for. Tonight, we are going to be discussing the root causes of blood pressure, medications, and some rapid changes in BP. You know, what could be possibly the cause of that? Let me introduce Dr. Christina Miller. She is double board certified in emergency and integrative medicine. She is laser focused on nutritional science and health promotion. She totally supports lifestyle medicine without question. She's currently at plant-based telehealth and then certified in 23 states. Thank you, Jean. And I get the honor of introducing Jean. Jean Schumacher is co-founder with Dr. Deborah Shapiro of the Pregnancy Advantage. So if you or anyone you know is pregnant or even thinking about it or recently pregnant, please do check this out. There's so much good information, classes, support, all sorts of things. She works one-on-one -on -one with patients, with people to educate them on living plant-based. And you can connect with Jean at www.simplyplantbased.net to learn more about all her programs, which include a ton of free resources. She has more free resources than anyone I have seen. She's a teacher and you can tell by her website. She's got free cooking, videos, recipes. You can learn all sorts of things there. And she even has her own YouTube channel, Jean Schumacher, Simply Plant-Based and you can get her latest videos there. Right, I just did one with Dotsie Bosch. Yes, oh, a good one. can't wait to check it out, Jean, that's yeah. awesome. Olympic gold medalist, athlete, oh, just an amazing person. But I just wanna comment that what we do discuss here is for educational purposes only. You don't always seek the advice of your physician before undertaking any kind of new healthcare regime. Yeah, I can't stress that enough. Thanks for bringing that up especially if you're on medications or have a medical condition as what we're giving, what we're talking about today is food and lifestyle information. And it is not to be one. It's not for to be used for you individually as a patient. It's for you just information to talk about with your doctor. If you're on blood pressure medicine or diabetes medicine, and you make aggressive diet or lifestyle changes, you can see rapid fall and get yourself in trouble. So please do talk to your doctor, do your own research, do a deep dive, learn more about it. Like Jean says, and I'm going to steal your line, Jean, you only get one body and there are no do-overs. So please do remember that. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Okay. First one is because we always talk about getting to the root cause, just saying. Okay. But what does that mean? You know, what does getting to the root cause mean? Because various conditions and medications can lead to secondary secondary hypertension and that there's lots of different things but when you get to the root cause because the the high blood pressure is just a symptom of what you're dealing with whatever it is so it's expressing that your body is not happy it's just and you got to find out why what is getting to the problem so there could be things like for example uh sleep apnea um, kidney disease, uh, issues with adrenal gland, you know, things like tumors, thyroid problems. I know I had, oh, I, and I was able to heal my thyroid again by changing my food and healing, uh, giving, allowing my body to heal. You know, certain medications could also be causing, you know, hypertension, like for example, birth control pills, cold remedies. A lot of those things will raise it. And then there is specific you know, cold red medications that are designed for people with high blood pressure. So please make sure that you are choosing some things like that, like decongestants, things like that. Some over-the-counter pain relievers and some prescription drugs can also raise it. And then of course, you know, let's not forget the illegal drugs such as like cocaine or amphetamines, which, you know, speeds up the system. Doc, what do you got? Yeah, in addition to that, there's, well, you, you mentioned kidney disease, but there, kidney disease is actually extremely common. And um, the most common reason for kidney disease in the U.S. is due to high blood pressure, actually. And so, and the thing about high blood pressure is, as people out there know who are listening, for most people, it's silent. So you don't even know you have it and it's damaging your kidneys because it's these fragile little, they're called glomeruli. They're these little the capillaries get really small and there's little, these little units in the in the kidney and if you have a high blood pressure whoosh it goes in whoosh whoosh it damages that fragile unit and it leads to permanent damage and it's the number one reason for um, kidney failure and needing dialysis 
is high, high blood pressure. Diabetes complications is extremely common. That's also, that's probably the second reason I think for high, for kidney disease. And so that's extremely common. Glomerular disease, um, which is where your kidney filter waste and sodium. And so instead they get, they become swollen. And when it's swollen, it doesn't work anymore. So it's, it's, it no longer filters and you, you build toxins in your blood as a result of this. And then there's renal vascular hypertension. And what that is, is the blood vessels get either atherosclerosis in it or they can they they constrict down for for different varying reasons such as hormonal changes in your body but atherosclerosis is probably the most common and so that goes along with high blood pressure as well and so you get narrowing of that blood vessel and you get decreased blood flow to your kidney and so it holds on to salt thinking that it's it's dehydrated there's not enough blood flow it needs more fluids but it's not really getting the blood, so it doesn't really need more fluid. So it holds on to more salt and you end up with high blood pressure as a result of that. And the re I wanna point out something, we keep talking about this. I know we talk about it like every week together, but it's so important because depending on the cause of your blood pressure, you can get a lot of these can be reversed when you fix the cause. So that's why we go to the root cause when we talk to each patient. One person has high blood pressure and might be sleep apnea. So they can start sleeping with, maybe they lose some weight. Maybe they open up their nasal passages. Maybe they sleep with a BiPAP machine. And those people, their blood pressure will be treated by that. Or maybe you have a thyroid disorder, as Jean mentioned, and you treat your thyroid and your blood pressure comes down, right? Or if you find out you have any kidney issue, you wanna treat that immediately so you don't lead a permanent problem. So it's really important to work with someone, work with a physician, work with someone knowledgeable who can help you figure out why you have high blood pressure, not just give you a pill and say you're done, but get to the root cause of it, as we keep saying. Well, and I also say, we, and we talk about this a lot, is that, you know, a lot of these medications have side effects. I mean, our body really was not designed to be on these medications long term. Right. Okay? It, it just wasn't. And when you start to take these medications, anytime you take anything, anything that goes on your body or in your body, your body has to deal with. You know, and a lot of these things have some pretty bad side effects as people. And I see the comments. I read a lot of these comments again and again and again. The side effects, a dry cough or a heave or, you know, a heart palpitations is causing this. You know, there's a lot of side effects. And so if we can just get to the root cause of these things, and that's where, you know, working with somebody like you, Chris, like you get to the root cause and have helped many, many people get off of medications just by changing their diet, you know, and lifestyle. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of what we have learned along the way is not right. Mm -hmm. You know, we've kind of had to toss out nutrition, <laughs> you know, I mean, grandma was right. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Yeah. I mean, without question, without question, but getting to the root cause will get to your high blood pressure and then you can reduce it without having to take medications because I, I read constantly in the in the group, you know, I'm on this medication and my doctor just added another medication. And, you know, instead of continuing to add more medications, which then, you know, you're dealing with two things, two different types, you know, wow. Anyway, it's, it's it, it can be done, but you have to be willing to get to the root cause. You have to be willing to make those changes in your life you know, as opposed to just taking the pill, because yeah, I mean, and, and doing this, oh my God, changing what you eat. And by going plant-based, I did it. I've lost over a hundred pounds. I've reversed my high blood pressure, you know, and I was on four medications at one point, you know, for my blood pressure, because it was so high. It was, it was uh, all the time high. And, and I learned a lot about myself along this journey. You know, one is like, salt i can't have salt you know and just learning about these these pieces you know a, a, it's like a puzzle that you're trying to figure out and, and and complete this puzzle and you've got this piece and this piece and then finally when they go together it's like wow it is pretty amazing so and i want to say one thing if people are on medications out there um don't please don't just stop your medication oh, absolutely uh, we're talking about the risk of medication, which there are many, but it's really bad to have high blood pressure too. So if you're at a point where your blood pressure is high and you need to be on medication and you're working with a physician, it's okay to start the medication. And then we get, we, you know, while we're working and getting to the root cause, and we re quickly can reduce it and get off it, especially if some people's 
blood pressures are dangerously high. And I've had people hear these types of talks and stop their medicine. And so you definitely don't want to do that. But we want to work with you so we can aggressively get your blood pressure down and get you off these medications, whether that's checking, you know, different labs to look at your hormones or your thyroid, whether that's to do a sleep study. I had a patient actually, he was in his 60s, young 60s, like I think he's like 62. And he who had high blood pressure that was diagnosed when he saw his doctor and he was put on two medications to lower it and it pers persisted, it stayed high. And he started working with me and he, you know, we worked on diet and lifestyle getting to the root cause. And we ended up changing his changing his diet of course he lost a, few, a little bit of weight but he still had high blood pressure and so i asked him questions about his sleep pattern he was waking up feeling tired and not sleeping well and so we got him a sleep study and sure enough he had sleep apnea he's waking up these apneic spells where he's not breathing at nighttime so people who snore or people who are waking up um having a difficult time breathing or people who feeling unrested in the morning those are three warning signs if you're sleepy all day and you can't understand why you're so tired you're not sleeping well then i recommend a sleep study, which you can do either a home sleep study, or you can get through your physician at a hospital and get it done. And so his show that his sleep apnea, so he's been treated for that now and his blood pressure, boop, it's totally normal and he needs no medication. So he went from two medications and still had a blood pressure 160 over like nineties and it was not going down. And we found out that it was due to his sleep apnea. And now it's in the one twenties over eighties. Plus he's made some lifestyle changes at the same time, but amazing. I mean, that's just a wonderful thing to see. I know. I mean, when you can do it holistically, naturally, and, you know, I also look at it this way too, that, that, you know, I don't want to be in the nursing home, you know, because when I get older, cause I, I want to be out living life to the fullest, you know, right up until the day I pass from this planet. Cause I love being I'm up on Cape Cod and I love being up here and kayaking and biking and hiking. Yeah, it's it's just amazing. So awesome. it's a good goal to have. Yep, it is a good goal. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the first one. That's to get into the root cause and figuring out what is causing the problem. Why are you having this high blood pressure instead of just taking a pill? So I think we've we've covered that one. Okay. Yep. All right, Chris, you're up. Okay. Uh, let's see. So here's a question. Now I take amlodipine 2.5 and 25 milligrams of losartan, which is working great for my blood pressure, but my heart is fluttering a lot and sometimes I have pounding heartbeats. Is that a normal thing for anyone else who takes these combined meds? First, I have to just jump in. I just, you know, I, I'm going to say this again and again and again. These, a whole food plant-based diet does not have side effects, okay? And it's going to calm down a lot of the problems that that you're having. And the food is amazing. I'm not going to lie. The food's amazing. So, you know, going on a whole, plant, whole food plant-based, people think like, oh my God, I'm, that's it. That's all I'm going to be eating is grass clippings and tree bark. Uh, no, because <laughs> I'm too much of a foodie. And actually the food is so much more, I have such more variety now than I ever did before. So the food's amazing. It's never ceasing to amaze me, the endless recipes that I come up with in combinations, but take it away, Doc. I know you've got the doctor answer, so I just well, have to say first, lifestyle. First, Jean, I want to stress what you're saying. So if anyone is listening to this and you know I'm concerned about their medications, if you're not already eating a whole food plant-based diet, I strongly urge you to look at it. I, it's medicine. It really is medicine. When you eat green leafy vegetables, when you eat foods high in nitrates, like uh, arugula, beets, even watermelon, you eat these nitrate rich foods and you get vasodilation and you literally melt away plaque. These foods increase nitric oxide in your body, which melts plaque. So if you're eating them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you do a green smoothie for breakfast, you have a salad with lunch and salad with dinner. This is medicine for you three times a day that is melting your plaque, dilating your vessels, and softening those arteries. And this is one of the reasons on a whole food plant-based diet, your, your blood pressure plummets. So if you can do nothing else, start adding green smoothies and salads and raw leafy greens and, and some of these nitrate-rich vegetables into your diet. They're packed with antioxidants, which put out inflammation in your blood vessel that's raising your blood pressure. Their, the polyphenols are softening your blood vessels. They're healing your body. And so a whole food plant-based diet is filled with fiber. All of these things are medicine. So it's not just like, oh, it tastes delicious, which it does thanks to people like Jean who help you make it taste good. But it's also 
it's truly medicine. So that's number one. And I, which I'm just seconding what Jean just said. And then the second thing I would say is, is you get, let's get to the root cause for this person too, because maybe this person doesn't need both of these medications. Maybe we could start cutting back on one of them or both of them or reducing dosages, right? And so we want to know why you're having a consistently high blood pressure and what can we do about it? What can, are there, is there anything we can do to help you get, start to get that down? That's the second thing. And that's because we're lifestyle medicine people. I'm a lifestyle medicine doctor. I specialize in figuring out why um, and helping you get it down as best I can by having to work with people like Jean, who can then show you how to make it easy and fun and tasty. Um, but the third thing is, so the, the actual question, it was about those two medications, amlodipine and losartan. And so if you look up on the um, package inserts for both of those, which a pharmacist will give you when they when they give you the medication, both of them report fast pounding or irregular heartbeats as a side effect. So, and they're usually these things are dose related. So having two medications is gonna be more than just one and having one at a higher dose is gonna be more than a lower dose. Not that everyone experiences it, not that you should stop it if you're on this medication, it's not life-threatening. These medications do help, help if you have life-threatening blood pressure or high blood pressure, they do help, they can be wonderful bridges while you're working on the root cause and making these lifestyle changes. They're wonderful br bridges. So if this is if this is bothering you and you're having these, you should definitely check with your doctor who prescribed them. Let, let them know you're, you're having these symptoms and they can either reduce the dose or if you're not ready for that yet because you haven't figured out what's going on causing it or made the, enough changes yet, then they can also switch you to another medicine that doesn't cause those symptoms for you. So, but there's other symptoms that you're gonna get. Both of these medicines leads to nausea, upset stomach, dizziness, lightheaded, that's extremely common with these medications. You can get numbness, tingling in your feet. Amlodipine is known for a lower leg swelling. So that's very common. Weakness, heaviness in your legs. So these are minor compared to the risks of high blood pressure. So if you have to take it, please do take it. But you know, maybe this is incentive to work hard to not need it anymore. And at that point you can safely cut off with your doctor. Please, this is, remember, this is not medical advice at all. I'm not telling anyone to stop your medication. I don't recommend that at all. I definitely remember to recommend talking to your doctor about it, looking for an alternative while you start making some lifestyle changes and look into other cause, you know, what you can do to help it in the meantime. It's true. It's true. Making those lifestyle changes, it's, your health is worth working for. I know I say this just about every time, but it, it is. And I remember my, you know, my father-in-law saying, you know, did you ever think it was going to be like this? Because, you know, he had a, a, a plethora of health issues. I mean, his, his brain was still functioning, you know, towards the end, but the, the rest of his body was falling apart. I mean, like literally, I mean, from high blood pressure to, you know, he had seizures to type two diabetes. He had a triple bypass and he, you know, the list goes on and on. And he's like, you know, did you ever think it was going to be like this? Well, you didn't take care of yourself. I'm sorry. You didn't, you know? And yeah, so you're, you're reaping the benefits of what you've done. So it's never too late. So at any age, if you're listening to this right now, at any age, we see benefits in people. It's amazing. I have an 84 year old patient right now who's doing remarkable. And I used to back when I lived when I lived in a different place and I was in a clinic, I had a 90 year old patient who was doing well. So after making lifestyle changes at age 90, so I, we worked together for three years and then I ended up moving. So I don't know what's happened to them, but they were 93 at that time doing great and had made improvements. So at any age, you know, you can start reaping this benefits that Jean's talking about. Yeah. Okay. We have another quick, I think we can get one more question in. My blood pressure has been mostly 140s over 90s, and my doctor just okayed me to increase Losartan from 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams, and I hope that does the trick. Have been on Losartan for three weeks and read somewhere that the three to six week range is the sweet spot for some people on Losartan when they notice the best results starting to happen. I read that most doctors want you to get down to at least 130 over 80s, and my doctor said if I got to 135 over 85, that would be good. So I have some baseline goals. But talk to us about, you know, these baseline goals. Is that is that a good range, like 135 over 85? It is a pretty good range, actually. So whoever's shooting for that, that's a good place to shoot for on your blood pressure medicine. The normal 
So normal is con blood pressure is still around, is still considered 120 over 80. Optimal, which is what we're shooting for, is less than 120 over 80. So what we're all shooting for right now is less than 120 over 80. So 117 over 79, that would be an optimal blood pressure, right? Um, anything over 120 is now considered borderline high blood pressure, 120 to 130, and then it's high blood pressure after that. However, when you're on the medications, there have been some recent articles that if you drop the blood pressure too low on a medication, so if you're shooting for 117 over 70 on a blood pressure medicine, that's too low. And there's been studies, actually recent studies, uh, recently in England published in 2020, there was an art, there was a study where they looked at over 400,000 people and they found that those who had dropped it their blood pressure less than 130 over 80, that they had in increased all-cause mortality. You would think dropping their blood pressure that these guys would be healthier and live longer, right? Mm -hmm. But if they dropped it through medication less than 130 over 80, they'd increase all-cause mortality. And what it, the reason is you need a blood pressure to perfuse your heart, to perfuse your brain, right? If your blood pressure drops too low all of a sudden, and if you have stiff arteries still, if you haven't gotten to the root cause, if you haven't softened those arteries, you still have stiff arteries and now you arbitrarily drop your blood pressure with a medication, you're not perfusing your brain, you're not perfusing your heart, your kidneys, your major organs, right? And so these people were suffering heart attacks, strokes. One of the big things is falls. It's a very common problem when elderly people, when their blood pressure falls too low and then they fall and then they hit their head or they break a hip and this leads to all, cause of, all kinds of problems. And so now shooting for 135 or 85 is excellent goal on medicine while you're working on lifestyle changes. So you continue those medications and then let's work on your diet, your lifestyle, your what else can we do? Can we work on your stress? Can we work on your sleep? Can we get you some more different type or more exercise or change it? There's always there's so much that we can do, I feel like, to help people. And then maybe you won't need as much Losartan anymore. And when your blood pressure gets less than 135 or 85, we can say, oh, maybe it's time to cut it down a little bit. And then we keep working and then, oh, maybe it's time to cut it down. And that's how it usually goes until, oh, look, you don't need it anymore. So, which is quite common. It's, and it's a wonderful day. That is a great day when you can finally say, you know, we're done with the medications, but that means, but you still have to stick to those lifestyle changes that you've made. Right. Yeah, even if for those who take blood pressure medicine, and I do recommend taking medicine, I prescribe it for my patients, I do. So while you're taking the medicine, you you want to be doing these lifestyle changes while you're monitoring it and so it doesn't fall too low. And if it you know starts to come down as you're making these lifestyle changes, which is what we expect it to happen, sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it's so fast. So it kind of varies a little bit. But as you're making the lifestyle changes, we see it come down and hopefully you need less. And it's okay to need a little bit of medicine. It's totally okay to use it. You know, that's what they're there for. We're lucky that we have these medications to help us to keep you safe. So if you can get it down to 135 over 85, hooray, that's great. And then, then let's, keep, let's keep on working on this lifestyle so we can get it lower and then hopefully you won't need quite as much of that medicine anymore once it gets lower. But please don't, again, don't stop it without talking to your doctor. Right? Because your health is worth working for. And I'm, I know I sound like a broken you know, record on this, but it is. So Dr. Miller, thank you so much. Always a pleasure hanging out with you on a Sunday night. <laughs> I know, right? It's fun. It's nice to talk to you. And I hope this is helpful for people. And I look forward to seeing you and doing it again. <laughs>